Greetings, unsettled souls. <clears throat> Welcome back to The Correct Views. <sighs> this post is going to suck no matter how you do it. Before I start, let me say that my heart um, honestly goes out to the family of these children in Connecticut. Obviously, that's what I'm speaking about. That's why you clicked. Um, it doesn't change my stance on gun control. The answer to gun violence is an armed society, because an armed society is a polite society. These cowardly and or mentally deranged people tend to choose places where they know full and well that there are no guns. And they do so in order to inflict the maximum number of casualties. And I read something, I'll be getting to the article later, that lays this out very succinctly. Let's say that you want more gun laws for this country. Okay. Let me ask you something. Does Connecticut already have laws against murder? And they do. Now, the killer broke the law against murder and shot the kids. So if you think that he broke the murder law, why wouldn't he break the gun law and still shoot the kids? The point is, this is the kind of reasoning that most people can see. And then you've got these gun control crazies that think that somehow banning guns are going to be the answer. Um, look, you know what? You ban guns and it's been said a hundred times. Only the bad guys and the criminals are going to have guns. We all need guns to defend ourselves, and if some more people had had guns in this case, things would have gotten a lot better. Um, I want to start off my discussion of this um, with a hero, an absolute hero. Remember that girl in Columbine uh, that uh, said that she was a Christian in the face of a gun and died? That was a hero, this is a mega hero here too. Listen to this. Uh, didn't credit. I'm having mouse issues here, but I absolutely, and I hate, anybody with me, and not to get sidetracked, does anybody hate those little, these little mouse pad doohickeys, give, give me a damn mouse, you know what I mean, alright, um, I'm not joking, I, this is such an awful report, but you didn't obviously tune into the show to see me sulk either, this is just a travesty, there's no way to report on this and not feel something, unless of course, you know. I know, you spend all day with uh, total obliviousness to everything going on around you. Family and friends remember the brave, caring legacy of Sandy Hook teacher Vicki Soto, 27 years old. Uh, many pictures of her there. Go and read the whole article. What she did is she took her entire class and hid them in the closet. And when this piece of human filth, I know exactly what his name is, and I'm not going to give him any publicity, because that's what a lot of these psychos want when they die. I'm sure you all know who he is. Um, when this piece of human filth went into the school and put a gun to her, what he... Uh, he asked her where the children were, and she said that they were in the gymnasium. Um, he then promptly shot and killed this beautiful person. And no matter what we get out of it, here's what I wish. I wish that there wasn't a ban on carrying guns. And I wish that uh, Vicky Soto would have had a gun. Because no matter how many kids he killed up to that point, and I'm just going to guess, I don't know the woman, maybe she was an extreme leftist in terms of guns. But I'm pretty sure if uh, Miss Vicky Soto had had a gun, there would be less children there, because if she was willing to die for those children, I have a feeling she would have been willing to live with live for those children, and I think she probably would have killed this piece of human waste. Um, this is from Infowars.com, Melissa Melton. Gun grabbers call for murder of NRA president's supporters in the wake of mass shooting. So it has now become the NRA's fault that this happened. When the NRA has the same point of view that I do. If you arm more people, then less people die. Do you think 
if there had been some adults armed in that school, that somebody would not have taken out a gun and destroyed this man. Sure, a couple of the children would have died. Did you not hear about China? On the same day, a lunatic hacked up and killed like 27 people in China. On the same day that the Connecticut disaster nightmare happened here. Look that up. Look up China Knife Massacre. So should we ban knives? Go to my video. Bob Costas was right. And before you go hating on the name, you have to watch the video. Um, this is ridiculous. So Michael Mayer um, at Prison Forbush, someone who should shoot this MFR, NRA President David Keene weighs in on the 2012 election, Glenn Beck. Um, the angry Democrat, what's this genius have to say? Um, gun control will exist when some nut job chooses to exercise their Second Amendment's rights at the NRA's headquarters instead of a school or a theater. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. So, these people here, and Michael Moore is a particular piece of human filth in this regard. Uh, mentioned in the same article, uh, I must say in a different article, uh, Infowars, Paul Joseph Watson. Michael Moore has armed bodyguards. But you, you watching this, you don't have a right to defend yourself. Just this pompous, uh, fat slob that can hire people to protect him. That's the way that a lot of these people think. It's because there's something wrong in their head. And I've got news for you. You start shooting up children among adults who are armed, and you're going to kill a whole lot less children than you would if you started shooting up a whole school where none of the adults were armed. That's the lesson that this shows. Um, I want to quote this real quick. Same article. CNN, post, CNN host Piers Morgan implied that even handguns should be banned in America when he tweeted, This is America's dumb blame. We banned handguns in Britain after that appalling tragedy. What will the U.S. do? An action is not an option. I love the next part. However, Morgan is seemingly ignorant to the fact that the decision to ban handguns in Britain did nothing to lower gun crime. In the six years following the ban, gun crime more than doubled. And for you uh, Usher fans, that means twice as many. Uh, Lady Gaga fans, yeah, times two. There you go. We're all on the same page. Um, speaking of celebrities that don't suck, since I mentioned two that do, um, basketball star comes to the defense of America's right to bear arms. Basketball legend Charles Barkley, also from, um, this is an InfoWars article, has come to the defense of hundreds of gun-owning athletes. In response to NBC host Bob Costin's recent remarks, if Joven Belcher didn't possess a gun, he and Cassandra Perkins would both be alive today. Might I say if Vicky Soto had a gun, many more children would likely be allowed alive today. Barkley says that guns provide a sense of peace and that the issue's focus should instead be the mistreatment of women. In an interview with USA Today, the current TNT NBA commentator said, Let's not make this thing about guns. Let's make this about mistreating women. That's unacceptable. I don't go out and I don't go off into the gun stuff. Some guys have guns who go hunting. Where do we stop at gun control at? He said. I'm not a hunter, but we can't say people can't have guns, Berkeley said. Wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear an intelligent, well-spoken man. And um, the exact opposite of the next article that I'm going to get to. A mail online from a celebrity who's awesome, Barkley, at least in this regard, to an absolute racial idiot. Racist idiot. As a black person, it's always racial. Uh, Django Unchained star Jamie Foxx explains why he is sensitive about being an African American. Jamie Foxx, let me let you know something, you piece of garbage. 
For one thing, I work in a club and a lot of white girls ask to hear your garbage music. Why? I don't know. Because you can't sing, your instrumentation sucks, and your programming could be done with somebody with a Fisher-Price computer who was four. Why anybody would listen to your whiny and soulful music. Yeah, you're so soulful about booty. Yeah, blackness is about booty, isn't it? Yeah, if you want to disgrace your own race, what is wrong with you? You do not represent all black people. You represent idiots. Jamie Foxx has revealed that he finds himself facing racial challenges in everyday situations of his life. The African-American actor explained during an interview with Vibe magazine that he is always sensitive about his skin color. Well, you know what? Nobody else is because most of America, yeah, there's some redneck white scum. I'm not going to say there isn't. Most people don't give a rat's ass. This is not 1960, Jamie Foxx. Wake up. Jamie, 45, admitted that every single thing in my life is built around race. No, everything in your life is built around hatred, lack of uh, education, and general wanting to be coolness. He told Vibe Magazine, because as black folks, we're always sensitive. As a black person, it's always racial. I come into this place and do a photo shoot, and they got Ritz crackers and cheese. I'd be like... Bitch, y'all don't know black people was coming? In the same vein, he explained that if he turned up at the photo shoot and there was fried chicken and watermelon, he would be annoyed at the stereotype. Do you know why? Because he's an elitist. And now he thinks he's really on to something now that he's in these major roles and there's more than just garbage music going on. Now he's working with directors that actually know a little bit about how to make a movie that doesn't suck. And he thinks he's better than everybody else. So no matter what you serve him, he's got to complain because he wants to look at everything through racial glasses. In the same vein, uh, Jamie also admitted that he feels that he must act and talk a certain way around white people and in his day-to-day -day job as an actor. He told the magazine, but the minute I leave my house, I got to put on my other jacket and say, hey, Thomas, Jillian, and Greg, and I got to be a certain person. But when I get home, my other homies are like, how was your day? Well, I only had to be white for eight hours today. I only had to be white for four hours. You know what, Jamie Foxx? You should worry about being a person. How about that? Instead of clamoring on about a bunch of garbage that nobody cares about. Because your movies don't suck while your movies are. Your music doesn't suck because you are black. Your music sucks for the same reason that Lady Gaga's music sucks. And that is that you have no talent. And if it wasn't for the directors you worked with, your acting would probably suck just as much. That is the correct view. I am livid. Um, two things to end this happily. One, what you are listening to is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. That doesn't mean that they always agree with me, but it does mean that they support free speech. And I mean they have delicious food. That's what I mean. Spaghetti and meatballs. Got a wonderful alcohol rack up there. They got best Italian bread you've probably ever eaten anywhere. Go to the Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. It is in downtown Canton. Last thing I want to get to because everything has been doom and gloom except Barkley and uh, the hero we had. And even that wasn't happy. This is good. France 24, International News 24-7, Motor Mutt's Pass Doggy Driving Test with Flying Colors. You know what? If you want more doom and gloom, I'm giving you all I got. Last story. This is awesome. AFP, a pair of highly trained canines guided a modified car along a New Zealand racetrack Monday, passing their doggy driving test with flying collars on live television despite the odd off-road detour. It was a heartwarming project aimed at increasing pet adoptions from animal shelters. A group of crossbreed rescue dogs from Auckland were taught to drive a car, steering pedals and all, to show the potential of unwanted canines. And there's more there. Go read it. It's awesome. It shows the dog driving. He's all buckled in. Um, I wonder, you know, I wonder if they gave the dog a little bit of alcohol, though, and tried to say that the only reason he messed up his test was because he was drunk when they really just finagled the car. You never know. 
All right, yeah, I make everything political, but go and look at it. It's really cool, and uh, I mean, do adopt uh, a shelter dog. Everybody I've ever known except me has had great uh, luck with doing so. Um, I must say it's the toughest assignment we've had, uh, said the trainer after two months of intensive training. We've done Lord of the Rings last summer, Samurai, many of the big movies, but to actually get a dog in a car with no trainer, and it does a whole gig itself, I tell you, that has been a real challenge. That is awesome. All right, you are listening to The Correct Views. Go buy a gun so that you can protect yourself. If you don't like me saying that, then you're probably going to be a victim someday, and hopefully the last thing you think of won't be that I warned you. Think of something more cheerful. Hey, do me a favor. If you can, donate to this show. All money donated to this show goes towards Better Gear. I do have a laptop again, but I don't have one that can handle the graphics and all that that I needed. Um, help! This is a cry for help. The more you donate, the better show that I can give you. And I always do my best. Thanks for listening to The Correct Views, friends. Good night. God bless. And uh, feel free to advertise here if you own a small business.